Welcome to another video from Ski Boat Parts Online.com, where our passion is keeping older ski boats on the water. We produce these videos to help you, our customer. Welcome back to another video from Ski Boat Parts Online.com. My name is Ron, and today we're going to take a quick look at a uh, an issue that's real exciting: drive dampers. We've had a number of calls in a recent incident uh, regarding a drive dampener that. Uh, we're going to bring to your attention some things that you may want to know about uh, drive dampers. So let's get into it. Uh, first thing, uh, most all ski boats are going to use what's called a 26 spline uh, input shaft. This is a typical Borg Warner velvet drive transmission. Uh, this is the input shaft right here and it's got 26 splines to it. And that's what most all ski boats are going to use. Uh, now, I also need to point out there's another common ski boat uh, spline and that is the 15 tooth PCM uh, gear. Uh, the PCM 40s, the little baby uh, transmission that they produced. Uh, this is an old one, old trans, an old dampener here. Uh, but you're going to find this on the, the PCM 40, both the 1 to 1 and the 1 to 3 reduction gears. Uh, it's important that you don't mix them up. You cannot put a 15 tooth dampener on a 26 tooth drive. It will not fit. You take a common 26 tooth damper and it will just slide around. It will not fit either. So make sure you know what uh, transmission you have. If it's a little PCM 40, uh, it's going to take a different drive damper. But if it's a common uh, velvet drive or a ZF gear uh, that takes the 26 tooth uh, damper, you'll be in good shape. The next thing I'm going to try to explain is the reason why we have a dampener plate and what it does. The simple explanation or function of a dampener. Um, your transmission, of course, is going to bolt to the back of the motor. Uh, it's going to attach to what's called a bell housing. Inside the bell housing contains your flywheel and damper plate. So in order to get access to the damper plate, you do have to remove the uh, transmission. Then you're going to remove the bell housing and it's going to be staring at you big as Dallas. Uh, the damper plate bolts to the back of the flywheel. Now, all of your engine power is coming out of your crankshaft which is bolted to the flywheel. The flywheel is what is spinning, has, contains all your energy and this damper plate is going to bolt directly to the flywheel. Now all of the horsepower that comes from the flywheel is going to get transmitted to this inner spline area for our transmission and the power must go through these springs all of the horsepower, all of the energy that your engine creates must go through these springs to get to the inner spline. Why do we do all that? Well, a typical ski boat V8 engine uh, or any reciprocating engine for that matter, uh, when a piston comes down or is fired, uh, it creates a pulse and we call this a harmonic vibration. That flywheel is not spinning perfectly smooth like a turbine engine for example does. Uh, there's pulses. It goes around kind of in a jerking motion. Uh, not something we can see without a, a strobe but it, trust me it's there. So every time that engine is rotating it's pulsing. These springs are designed to absorb most of that vibration. It's not going to cancel every bit of it but it gets most of it. Uh, and that's going to save the wear and tear of the gearbox, the gears inside the transmission. Without this damper plate, uh, I don't suspect the transmission would last more than 50 hours. These harmonic vibrations are that uh, strong. So we have uh, the springs that's absorbing the energy or the harmonic vibrations. It's basically smoothing out the power before it gets to the transmission. That's the reason why every ski boat is going to have a harmonic uh, damper on it. Uh, it's a vibration damper, uh, whatever you want to call it, it's a vibration damper. So that's the reason why we have it. Uh, next we'll go into a couple of the installation tips. 
Replacing a drive dampener, uh, once you have the transmission out of the way and the bell housing off, that's a straightforward, simple procedure. Uh, you'll simply remove the bolts that hold it to the back of the uh, uh, flywheel. You'll have either three or six, set them off to the side. We reuse those. Uh, these bolts are not uh, overly tightened. You're not going to put 80 pounds of t tension on them and, and stretch the bolts and need to replace the bolts every time. I've read some of that uh, baloney on, on the internet and it just isn't true. These bolts don't get tightened that tight. So, uh, when you go to bolt it back on, what you do need is some thread lock. Uh, I prefer the red thread lock. Uh, for these bolts, you're going to want to put a good amount of thread lock on the threads, thread the uh, bolts back in, either your three or your six, and uh, you'll be good to go. Torque is somewhere in that 28 to 30 pound range. Uh, most shops just use their uh, 3 8 ratchet and just get, put a good pull on it. Uh, I don't think I've ever pulled a torque wrench out to put one on, to be honest with you. So. That's uh, that part. Make sure you put a liberal amount of spline grease inside the uh, splines and on the input shaft of the transmission. If you don't have spline grease, use your favorite trailer bearing axle grease. Uh, that'll work just as fine. Now, some of the symptoms on uh, what, uh, how do you know the drive dampener needs to be replaced? In most cases, you're going to have some telltale signs that it's going. When this uh, is all assembled on there, let me put this back together, um, particularly at idle speed, uh, either in neutral or just in gear, if you begin to hear a metallic clinking type noise, clinking, clanking, coming from this area of the engine, and it becomes pronounced and loud and then when you give it a little bit of throttle it goes away that's the telltale sign that you've got a harmonic dampener going out uh, now on the older ski boats uh, boats that are under 300 horsepower uh, boats that have the older American made drive dampeners um, it's not uncommon to see 1500, 2000, I've seen them with 2500 hours on them before they failed um, we've replaced transmissions that have failed where the dampener was still good with 2500 hours on it but you replace the dampener anyway uh, if you're going through all that work replace it so again if you hear this metallic clinking noise almost like a tick tick or clink 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 at, particularly at idle um, and then it goes away what happens is you've got a spring that has gone loose and that's the noise you're hearing is that spring rattling right now these springs are tight as can be I can't compress those things uh, so you'll hear a, a, a noise it's a metallic noise of that spring that's vibrating around it's loose in there and as soon as you give it a little throttle you're loading all those springs up and the noise goes away so if you have that sound coming out of your uh, transmission area uh, I strongly suggest that you uh, take a look at that drive dampener and get it ready to be replaced uh, because next I'm going to show you uh, one that we just ran into um, and some of the, uh, the myths and fallacies that I've read on the internet lately regarding drive dampeners. So let's get to that part next. Recently we had a, uh, probably the most, uh, no not probably, it was the most catastrophic failure of a drive dampener that I have ever seen in, in my whole career. Um, this was a uh, uh, around a 2000 model uh, popular boat we're not going to name names uh, with a uh, 300 horse small block in it and this is all, all the pieces that we were able to recover um, from this this is your inner spline area the springs what's left of the springs here now Pay attention, we don't have all the springs. Some of the springs actually departed the boat and were found on the swim platform, uh, which is just unbelievably crazy. Uh, but this thing was a catastrophic failure. There was a, the amount of energy, uh, and when this failed, it was at a wakeboard speed. So you're probably talking 2,000, 2,200 RPM, but the amount of energy when this let go uh, tore the sheet metal, tore the springs out, 
uh, the steel here goes but what was even more impressive but wait there's more this is the bell housing when this thing let go it tore the casting this cast aluminum bell housing it tore it up uh, there was another piece here that was found laying in the bilge that came out of it. but this bell housing is absolutely toast um, so you know, in the past before I had seen this um, when dampeners fail they fail you know, worst thing happens is you put it in gear and the engine just revs up the no power is getting transmitted through the dampener to the transmission uh, but this one kind of opened my eyes that uh, when they can when they fail they can be catastrophic and uh, you know, God forbid there was a child or somebody sitting in that seat this is a V-drive boat and I mean it, it could have been uh, could have been ugly um, so that led me to some more uh, interesting uh, uh, research into uh, uh, visiting Mr. Google and finding out what others are finding and apparently this is not that uncommon that there have been others that have failed so that leads me to our next question uh, why are they failing what uh, what can cause premature failure um, and what about these parts that they're being replaced with these are all all good questions that, that I was wondering about um, because the nature of a dampener is there to smooth the harmonic vibrations uh, I can't help but believe that if an engine is running for a long period of time uh, out of tune where all eight cylinders are not contributing equally to the, the the rotation of that crankshaft if you've got a couple of weak cylinders um, that that would accentuate the vibration that would cause a premature it cause your damper to do more work than it was designed for uh, that could certainly be one possibility uh, for premature dampener failure now this dampener by the way uh, failed at under 500 hours there's less than 500 hours on this dampener when it failed and according to the owners there was really no telltale sign they thought they heard that metallic sound uh, within an hour before she let go uh, so so that was you know, kind of disturbing actually um, there's a lot of these out in the water so one of the things I want to see was this is uh, one of the dampers that we sell um, now before I even go on I want to, the difference between the triangular and the round one if you go by the books uh, the triangular one is typically used for small blocks the round one is typically used for big blocks however uh, starting in the late 90s as small block Chevy's got more and more powerful some of the boat builders started using the heavier duty so this is a heavier duty dampener than the triangular one uh, what I recommend is if you've got a small block Ford or Chevrolet and you're in that 270 horse or below range uh, the, the triangular dampener works just fine but if you've got a small block uh, or big block but mostly what we see are small blocks uh, fuel injected uh, uh, small block Chevys if you've got in that 300, 315, 320, 325, 340 horse you better be using the bigger damper uh, now I read online that uh, you got to make sure you have one where the, the springs were totally encased. Uh, this one here actually was encased. We had some of those pieces here that it was a, a covered. You couldn't see the springs. They had a sheet metal covering over them. Uh, some people say, well, it's got to be the color of the springs or how many springs. Uh, they both had the same amount of springs. So I did start looking, and, and coincidentally, you know, I'm not. I love to, to sell and, and buy American-made products as much as I can, but in this uh, the market that we work in today, you can't help but get some things made from uh, foreign countries. Uh, but even parts that come from foreign countries, you've got good, better, and best. So I grabbed what we're selling off the shelf, and I wanted to compare what uh, some things with the remains of this old one. The first thing what I did was I, I measured the sheet metal thickness. Okay, I measured the two, and the numbers I came out with was the one that failed here. 
had a thickness of 0 .065, 65,000 seven inch thick. Uh, the one that we're carrying is considerably thicker, it's 78 thousandths of an inch thick. But the, again, the sheet metal did fail, but that was not the root cause of what happened here. Um, so the next thing, since the springs are doing all the work, okay, I took a really close look at the remains of these springs. You know, these things got twisted up, but I've got one here that was still whole. It's got both ends on it, and, it, and it's, uh, there it is. It's still, uh, it's not usable, of course, but I could measure it. So the length of the springs were virtually identical. However, the diameter of the springs is considerably different. Uh, these measured at uh, uh, 0.45 inches in diameter, and these are at 0.85 so these springs on this dampener that we're selling as a replacement are considerably larger than what this had from the factory originally. Uh, now there are no stampings on any of these parts to see, you know, where's the country of origin or who, whose name is on it. Uh, there, there's nothing to be found on these parts. Uh, not a single part number, uh, nothing here. And I've looked all through these. Now the bell housing, that, that has a stamp name on it. But uh, it, it, it is disturbing that it can fail and apparently has failed. So I guess the bottom line is you want to get the best dampener you can get for the money. Um, I'm comfortable with this. I know that there are boat builders and engine builders using that dampener that we sell up to the 450 horsepower range. So... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident with that one, but uh, I just wanted to share this with you. You know, this is some serious damage. I'm sure the camera, I hope the camera can pick all this up, but boy, it just tore completely out. These parts were found all over the bilge. Um, in addition to the damage you see here, what, I, what you're not seeing is the inch and a quarter water supply hose that supplies the water to the engine. That's a wire reinforced hose. Part of this uh, dampener went through and just sliced that hose in half, leaving it connected just by part of the wire that was still inside the hose. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a catastrophic failure. So that's our little tutorial today on drive dampeners. Uh, of course, we're going to show you the part numbers uh, for our dampeners uh, that we sell here as replacements. Uh, those will be in the video in different places. Uh, so I hope this helps and maybe explains a few things to you if you're having some clinking clanking noises at idle you want to take care of it you don't want to end up like this poor customer did so thank you and God bless and have a great summer boating thanks for watching this video from ski boat parts online.com my name is Ron and we appreciate you watching our videos if you like these hit the like button and if you want to see more of them hit the subscribe button Thank you and have a great week boating.